On this teaching challenge, Brunella Scales and Timothy West, two pillars of the British acting establishment, take over a drama class from Pimlico School, a cradle for Britain's theatrical future. I want to be famous. You'd need to sort of bust a little move there. <laughs> Tim and Prunella have written a guidebook for aspiring actors and are going to road test it for the first time with Rory Simpson's drama group. Think about some of the questions already that you would want to ask. Tiago, we had a conversation about that before, didn't we? Well, now, what did you say you wanted to ask? How much they was they like um, earned in it? Right. Right, so don't be shy. I mean, that's the question you want to ask. If, obviously, guys, you know, don't ask if she had sex last night. You know, <laughs> you, you can't get too personal. But what you can do is anything you want to know to do with the business or you think is appropriate, you're allowed to ask. So, how much, what, you want to know how much she gets paid mm. for a particular job? We're really concerned about the whole state of the theatre, you know, and, and therefore, you know, the new generation of actors have got to know what they're doing. And um, if we feel we can sort of pass on a bit to them, about things that we know have worked over God knows how many... Well, it's, it's an, an aggregate of a hundred years' experience between, between us. <laughs> Not each, between us. I shall probably say to them, don't do drama as a subject at O-level or A-level or even at university. Uh, not because it's not well taught. It, in many cases, it's very well taught. But an actor, a professional actor, needs to know about life, not about drama. Tim and Brunella's master class will be at Battersea Arts Centre, where the pupils are full of anticipation. Well, I've always loved drama. I like acting and like performing in front of people and I'm a little bit of a show off. So, yeah, it'll be fun. Uh, I'd like to meet famous people as well. That, that'll be interesting to see how it goes. I just want to have some fun, but at the same time learn. Because when she's there teaching us the workshop, I'm going to learn so much and also Timothy West. I think all teachers, I think we all really like to watch other people teach. Um, it's something we don't get um, an opportunity to do. It, you know, it's really valuable because you actually look at other styles of teaching and look at how they engage students. I'll get lots out of it watching Timothy and Prunella teaching. It'd be great. <laughs> Miss Simpson will be picking up teaching tips from inside the theatre's lighting box as Prunella and Tim watch each student perform a monologue. Morning, everybody. Um, this is Prunella Scales. I'm Timothy West, and we're married and uh, have been for a long time, and uh, we've also been acting for a long time. It's great to meet you all today and see some of your work. There's an awful lot to get through, and we probably won't get a chance to see everybody's work, but, but um, we'll do as much as we can, and uh, we'll try and be helpful, and um, I'm sure we're going to enjoy it. So, um, anything you want to say? No, who, who, would like, I've got, uh, who would like to go first? Volunteers. Yep. Mm? Right? Yes. Good. Okay. Your name is sorry. Can't read. Tiago. Right. Thank you very much. So, Tiago, you're doing a, a speech of Arthur from King John. Yeah. Who are you talking to in this speech? I'm talking to King Arthur. No, I think no you're don't not. You're, you're not. talking to the jailer. Oh, you're right. You're talking yeah. to Hubert. Oh, Hubert. Yeah, um, anyway. <laughs> but no, no, we, we have to explain that these, these pieces were, were selected from books and monologues, weren't they? So, so you haven't actually read the play? No. No, never mind. So Note we'll number one. That, but, uh, Teaching point number one. Read the play. Find out all you can about the part, about the character, about the circumstances, and it will help you to play the scene. You're talking to... Hubert. Hubert, yes. The, the who, who jailer. Has, he's been given the job of killing you. Have you the heart? When your head did but ache, I knit my handkerchief up upon your brows. The best I had, a princess wrought it me. And I did never ask it you again. And with my hand I held your head as midnight. And like the watchful minutes to the hour. Still and anon. Cheered up the heavy time. Will you put up mine eyes? These eyes that never did nor never shall. So much has frowned upon you. Well done. Very good. Yes. 
Yeah, well done. I, I think it's a piece that you should hang on to. It'd be a good audition piece for you to, when, when you know, know it better. And I think it would be very useful. Um, this is a, a, a physical note. I think it would be very useful for you if you had a bench or, a, or a, a chair and Hubert was standing behind it so that occasionally you can sit to talk to him like that. Do you see what I mean? It, it, will, it will vary it, it, vary it physically. And he has to be crying at the end, doesn't he? If heaven be pleased that you must use me, well, then you must. Will you put out mine eyes, these eyes that never did nor never shall so much as frown on you? <laughs> no, it's it. <laughs> Having shown the way with the courtly language of Shakespeare, Brunella and Tim hear a more modern example of a character in distress. Call me a slag. He said I was asking for it the way I dressed. And he went mad, thumping me. My mother tried to stop him, but he just pushed her off and kicked me down the stairs, just yelling and, and, and punching. And my mum's trying to get between us, but, but he, I mean, he's kicking and I can feel blood in my eye. And, 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 and she gets between us and, and she's holding my head and she's kissing me. And he's shouting, he's saying, get her out, get her out, it's me or her. It's your choice, woman. And, and she's holding me and she's kissing me. And, and she's saying how it's best for everyone and how, how I've, I've gone too far. And I just want to say f off. Go away and die. Kiss yourself awake. Kiss yourself awake. <laughs> Lovely piece. Well done. <laughs> right. Tell me how old you are. Me? Or no, not you. Leslie. Leslie. Leslie, I'm, I don't know. It doesn't actually say. You anything. should know. It you does, should does, make does up say. your mind. Okay. I think she's it, probably about 16 or so. Fine, yes. But you, act, actor, you must make up your mind and know who you are. Okay. The only other um, uh, note I've got, which is a general note, is the whole principle of physical self-editing. All your gestures were completely truthful. I believed them for the character you were, but it was a little bit monotonous. Okay. You know. Right, let's, can we hear it once again? Just once sure. again. Um, call me a slag. Said I was asking for it the way I dress. Why did you stress the word I there? Because she's explaining. Call me a slag. Said I was asking for it. Okay. I think so. He called me a slag. Said I was asking for it the way that's I dress. The, that's one, that's better, better. And he went mad, thumping me. Mother tried to stop him, but he, he just pushed her away and, and, and kicked me down the stairs and he was yelling and punching. And, and, and my mum's trying to get between us, but, but he, and he's kicking and, and I can, I've got blood in my eye. And, and, and she gets between us and she's holding my head and she's kissing me. And, and he's shouting, he's saying, get her out, get her out. It's me or her, your choice, woman. And, and, and he's, he's throwing my stuff out on the street and she's kissing me. And I just wanted to say, f off. I think it's more powerful if you don't act the actual okay. thing. If you, and I just want to say, f off. So go from, uh, um, and she's kissing me and says it's best for everyone. And she's kissing me and she says how it's best for everyone and how I've gone too far. And I just wanted to say, f off. Go away and die. Kiss yourself awake. Kiss yourself awake. Beautiful. Yes, very good. <laughs> With the first session over, stars and students adjourn for lunch and to discuss how times have changed. Each audition is about, I think, about £35. Pounds. You pay for auditions? You have to pay for auditions, yeah. Monster. Each audition. It's not as artistically interesting as it used to be. Now, it's how can you find a blockbuster which uh, it's going to cost mega, mega, mega bucks, but won't have any dialogue to speak of. Don't want people speaking to each other. They, they want intergalactic missiles crashing and, uh, and explosions. From anecdote and theory over lunch, it's back to the practical as the afternoon workshop session begins. Right, Alvaro. What the hell did they know? The cat's following me. Why should I be locked up? I didn't do nothing but protect myself. 
A woman ought to learn her place. Even a woman from the street got to know that she's got a place. Well, what do you expect? Living in Harlem, USA, heaven? <laughs> Jesus, there's no heaven. That's what I'm trying to talk to that other woman when she put her face in my business. No, I don't. Yeah. Could you understand it? Could you follow it all? I found it difficult to follow. Now, the main thing I have to say to you is, is a thing about phrasing. In general, when speaking, well, speaking any, any text, depending on, on, but especially classical text, don't stress possessive pronouns. Her place, you said. A woman ought to know her place. When in doubt, go for the noun. A woman ought to know her place. Do, do you agree? Yeah. Yeah, OK. Um, do you agree? Collective yeah. ear. She put her face in my business. When she put her face in my business. Mm -hmm. Go for the noun. Would you like to just try it once, once again and try right. and go for And now, who are you and what do you want? This character. A sad goat. You're? <laughs> a sad, a sad Psycho. A psycho, yes, you're psycho. a psycho, yeah. right, yeah, okay. <laughs> Put your hands in your pockets. We've got a much too repetitive, All right. much too repetitive. We have to think about the shape we make on the stage to entertain people's eyes as well as their ears, um, consistent with truth and character. But we got far too much of this, and it spoils our concentration on what you're saying. Right. Okay. What the hell did they know? The cut's following me. Why should I be locked up? Well done. I didn't do nothing but protect myself. No, protect myself, not protect, protect myself. That's the one, do you agree? Yeah. yeah. All right, go from I didn't do nothing but... Protect myself. Yeah. A woman ought to learn her place. No, a woman ought to learn her place. A woman ought to learn her place. Even a woman from the street knows that she's got a place. That's what I tried to say to that other woman. When she put her face in my business. No, I don't, you had another stress on my business. All right. When she put her face in my business. When she put her face in my business. Yes, all right. <laughs> Onward. And I... And I have five steak stash in my coat. I got no, no inclination no, to talk no. to her at all. And this is a joke. You're not delivering. No. Okay. <laughs> and then she wants to have a conversation with me in the supermarket. And I got five steaks stashed in my coat. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yes, yes. but right. I mean, you don't, don't need to show them, but uh, you don't want to have a conversation in the supermarket with somebody when you've got five steaks that you've nicked All right. in, in, in your pockets, eh? The blood might start the to run. blood might start to run, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I got five, five steaks stashed in my coat. You're still st stressing. <laughs> you've got to, you, where you won't get the laugh if you say my. If you stress my, sorry, you won't. And I got five steaks stacked in that coat. Better, <laughs> better, much. <laughs> I don't have any inclination to talk to her at all. None. <laughs> and walk off. Yes, it's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very nice. Yes, yes. <laughs> Stick with it. Any questions about that, Avara? Any questions? What would you advise me to do when I have to do my part of, when I have to be more aggressive, like on the worst? Never play a quality, always play an action. Don't play your anger, play what you do about it. All right. To excuse yourself. Look, I was furious with him because he wanted, he, 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 wanted he wanted to rape me, you know? And I, I mean, how dare he? Not, right, not do, he wanted to rape me. <laughs> 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 After the speeches have been knocked into shape, Prunella and Tim subject themselves to a merciless grilling from their young students. Hi. It seems like actors and, and celebrities and, and all that nowadays seem to have gone through some sort of um, plastic surgery of some sort. Have you had to go through any plastic surgery in your, in, in your years of acting and, and anything like that? Can I first, first of all, uh, make a difference between actors and celebrities? They don't, they, they don't belong in the same category at all. Okay. Uh, no, uh, I, I think if you can afford it and you have a, you have a problem, um, many years ago I had, I had a, a, a little tuck taken there, which um, ages ago, you can claim it against tax. 
And if it gets you more work, it's a, it's a useful thing to do. It doesn't make you do. a better actor. It doesn't make you a better actor. No. And would you say your most um, memorable role was your famous roles, the ones you're most famous for, or any other ones? One of my favourite parts ever was a, a series called After Henry, and, and it was quite successful in its time, but it hasn't survived anything like as long as... Um, Forty Towers. Forty Towers, where I'm playing a dragon. <laughs> they, in, in British comedy, uh, they love women who are post-menopausal and or so eccentric as not to be a sexual threat. In American comedy, you can be pretty and dumb and funny, or intelligent and ugly and funny. In French comedy, you can be intelligent and attractive and funny and female. But in British comedy, if you're going to be funny and female, you have to be post-menopausal or so eccentric as not to be a sexual threat. Or, or, or very stupid. Or very stupid, yes. <laughs> Brunel and Tim's wit and experience have proved not only seductive to the students, but also their teacher. I really enjoyed having the experience of working with you. Certainly, um, for any drama teacher, having practitioners in um, is brilliant. Mm. I mean, I think for, for me as a drama teacher, this mm. really one of the hardest things is actually going through the whole um, sort of teaching of how we, you know, take the written page and bring that into sort of practical performance. A lot of what we're talking about really is um, simply listening, keeping your ears open and listening to how people speak, mm. you know, and, and um, particularly uh, uh, people who are, who are sort of fair, fairly articulate and, and, uh, and find out how they get their reactions, how they make you laugh, how they make you cry, mm. how they make you frightened or disgusted or resentful or what, you know. But also it is not about that it is an interpretative life. Mm. Not, it's not about celebrity. Mm. It absolutely, well, mm. I think celebrity is, is our, a sort of dirty word in our vocabulary. You know, the more private you are as a person, the more power you have as an actor. Thank you so much, both of you. Thank you for having us, it was fascinating. <laughs> First of all, I can remember thinking, oh no, it's just gonna be strict and boring and they're just going to sit here and we're going to ask them questions, it's going to be very direct. But when they came in it was, it was very relaxed and you know they were very outgoing and you got to ask them questions and you could feel free with them even. We really enjoyed it. They were both really down to earth, both of them. And they had lunch with us and stuff so it was really enjoyable to get to know them a lot more. It wasn't so like them talking to us, it was talking to each other. They, they actually came and spoke to us, being like young kids. Like, it's not like we were all from some private school or anything like that, we are just from a common school. And then it's good that they speak to us on the level that on the level that we're on, and they help us out with the stuff that we're doing. Because there's not that much celebrities that will do that in it.